does. Good morning, everyone. I'm back. The last two months have been a really crazy episode in my life. I've been moving all over Japan, doing all kinds of things for work. It's been a great time. I've met a lot of people, but now I'm finally in my home and talking to you guys face to face again, and I'm really excited. I woke up this morning with like a ton of energy, feeling like I didn't give a fuck, went to the store in my slippers, had kebabs for breakfast, and now I'm going to make a tier list video for you. Uh, the reason I want to make a tier list video right now is that all of the Season 2 characters have been released and I also wanted to wait for a little while so that I could play all of the new characters a little bit more but I also wanted the meta to kind of settle around them. It takes uh, a while I think for a character to sort of find their position in the online environment and I feel like that's been happening and I have a sort of clear view of what I think right now. So we're going to jump over to the image in a little bit but I just want to preface uh, this by saying that you always stick your neck out when you make tier list videos for fighting games because when you express opinions then people can you know disagree with those opinions and you can get into uh, arguments and debates and all the rest of it but a tier list is not one opinion it's like 50 opinions in one go and so people get very excited and i want you to know that uh, this is just meant as a basis for discussion it's you know heavily it's entirely my opinion so take everything with a grain of salt and if you really do disagree with some of the placements that I've made, uh, I would really appreciate if you let the rest of us know uh, and explain you know, uh, your reasoning because if we can have a, a nice discussion about this, I think that's the most interesting outcome of a list like this. Uh, I think a lot of people use tier lists to choose a character, which is not a really uh, a great way of doing that, but it can be uh, really, really useful for having a discussion about you know what makes a good character uh, in Tekken and so on. So we're going to jump over to the list right now. I'm not going to uh, sort of reveal it gradually uh, because I think some people might want to just have a look at it and then move on with their day. Um, but we're going to talk about it. If you just want to have a look and move on, that's fine. But I'm going to sort of, you know, justify and analyze a little bit uh, as we go through it. Uh, so I think I need to press this button right here to make it come up. And I should still be down here. Sorry, I'm, you know, so, so very crappy with technology, but I do my best. I hope that video quality is coming out all right. So I made a four tier list, which is what I've settled on when I make lists for Tekken. You can get a lot more nuance if you have more tiers, but if you make it like this, I can get very sort of clear answers, answers for what every tier means. And basically my reasoning is that uh, tier one is uh, contains characters that I think are a little bit too good and a little bit too, you know, uh, out there on the strong side. And four are characters who have sort of fallen off and are, are, are um, very weak. And ideally, I, I feel like every character should be brought towards the center and be in either two or three. If the game were like truly perfectly balanced, even though it is a very balanced game. Uh, and then I just think that within those two middle tiers, the, the characters in tier 2 are just, you know, one clear step above the characters in tier 3. So 2 is just better than 3 in my opinion, but they're both sort of, you know, solid. Um, so uh, maybe we should uh, start at the top and work our way down. You can see that the top tier for me has changed a little bit, and I think that a lot of people are probably already writing comments about how they might be, you know, disagreeing with it. So we should probably go up here. Uh, Dragonov, Xiaoyu and Devil Jin have been considered top tier characters for a long while and they were top tier characters in, in my latest list as well. And then I've made two additions, Kazuya and Jin. I think Jin is not that controversial, I think most people would agree that he is an extremely good character in this game. His uh, Hell Sweep, for example, has a lot of the same benefits uh, as Devil Jin's does and that's famously you know, one of the best moves in the game. It's not as useful because uh, it launches the opponent in you know, um, an awkward way and you can't use the, the wall and interact with the wall in the same way. But you can use it for the same way or in the same way for creating uh, positioning advantage and really controlling space. and putting your opponent where you want them on the stage and so on. But I just think uh, overall his mids, lows, just general poking game uh, with punishment, uh, everything is just extremely, extremely powerful uh, and good. And uh, the more I play against Jin, like every single time when I run into a really good Jin player, I always like tighten up because I feel like it's time for a real challenge, you know. Um, and uh, in my mind, if I compare him to characters in the lower tiers, I just feel like he is one step above. And so I decided to promote him. And then one of the most uh, controversial placements uh, in my list is I put Kazuya in the top tier. And 
a lot of Kazuya players have been talking about, you know, during the, the lifespan of Tekken 7, about how he's not necessarily all that good. Uh, I don't think anybody would consider him, you know, middle tier or lower. He's definitely very solid, but is he top tier? Um, so I was debating with myself whether or not I should put him up here, and I decided to just, you know, uh, look at it, you know, on... <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry, on paper. Um, and just on paper, I think he categorically has more powerful tools than most other characters. You look at a, like a move category, and Kaze usually has something that is just categorically more powerful than what most other characters get. Uh, while standing launcher at 13 frames, very rare, extremely rare, almost no characters get it. And uh, a lot of the ones that do, like Josie, has to do like an awkward sort of easy to drop thing where she doesn't get a lot of damage, whereas Kazuya will just do, you know, a 13 frame launcher from while standing, no problem. The jab string and the 10 frame block punisher, which is the same move. Uh, extremely powerful, you know, very, very top tier in that category. And when you start talking about with punishment, of course, he's, you know, uh, he has access to the most powerful move in that category in the game. And so uh, the more I think about it, the more I feel like if you just look at uh, the generic toolkit of a typical sort of mid tier Tekken character, Kazuya just kind of um, uh, has tools that uh, are one step above on paper and just mathematically a lot of the time. And I for that reason, felt like I should put him up here, and I, I am sticking my neck out a little bit because I'm not a Mishima player, and you know Mishima players feel really strongly about this kind of thing, and they might uh, come out and criticize it, but you know I don't really care. It, it's more important for me to be honest and to hear what you guys have to say about it. But that's going to be my top tier. If I were to promote any other characters from you know the one tier below up here and call them truly top tier. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, the strongest uh, characters in tier two are Brian, Steve, uh, Paul, and Law, probably. And I think uh, an argument for either of those characters to be promoted to the very top tier uh, would be pretty valid. Uh, but let's move down to tier two and keep talking. You can see, first of all, sorry, my uh, I just was sitting on my leg. Um, I've put Julia up here, and out of the really new characters. She's the character that I've placed uh, the highest. I think she's extremely solid. I'm gonna mention here, by the way, I've been meaning to make this video, but I don't really want to because it's kind of negative, but I feel like Julia is a very, very, very frustrating character to play against, and uh, it was sort of difficult for me to enjoy on uh, online Tekken around the time that she was released because I decided that I didn't want to play her myself, but I had to play against her a lot, and uh, she has a lot of really frustrating, you know, the, the cheap stuff that annoys you when you play against characters like, uh, for example, Katarina. She's uh, very similar to her, in my opinion, in a lot of ways. But the difference is that Julia is also, if you want to play her, you know, seriously, uh, a very solid character. And I think her gap closing game and her pressure from a range is just one of her best aspects. Um, the fact that she has <clears throat> a mid that functions and has the frame data of a, a typical very fast mid poke, but can come in from like half screen and close gaps as well. It's like imagine if you're playing Miguel and you're down for one, just uh, you know rushed halfway across the screen instantly and had the exact same frame data. It would be an extremely powerful tool. And she has similar stuff to that solid mix-ups. And then I think the combo game is honestly like the wall carry that she uh, can pull off is one of the most uh, like. Uh, crazy wall carries I've ever seen. I mean, she can carry literally across entire screens from wall to wall, no problem. Gets really, really high damage, and uh, she also gets to deal that damage because she's good at launching the opponent. She has a good, a lot of good um, opportunities in her standard game where she can actually, you know, get combos. Which is, you know, for example, I play Bob right now who doesn't really have... Um, he deals his, his damage outside of combos a lot, uh, Kazumi is another character like that, um, has a lot of really good poking tools and, and focuses on a lot of other things because her standard launchers a lot of the time aren't all that great. I guess Ford 3 is a big buff for her, she has a new launcher in that in, in the new season. Um, but I placed Julia here and then the next character, I should say by the way at this point that there's no... Um, uh, within the ranks, there is no uh, order. So, if you look at the top tier, I'm not saying that Dragonov is better than Jin. They're just in the top tier together. So, I just wanted to clear that up. Um, if somebody was misunderstanding that, if I was uh, going to try and put everybody in some sort of order, it would just be com completely impossible. I think. Uh, so, for example, you see Miguel and Bob are in the same tier in tier three, but I think Bob is actually a stronger character than Miguel. If I had to. Uh, pick between the two, which I which I thought was the better, and you can see I put Osaka up here. When I made my latest tier list uh, around the start of season two, uh, I put Osaka quite low in that one, and that was one of the 
biggest points of contention with my viewers. They were like, no, you're underestimating how much better Asuka is in Season 2. She's extremely good right now. Uh, and then I just realized soon after that 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 was absolutely true. And I think she's amazing right now. Uh, very, very strong and also very frustrating. Uh, but this is the, the time to play Asuka because she's never been better. Really, really good at turtling up. Uh, great damage, uh, very very strong from a range again and gap closers and, and all the rest of it. So she's uh, very very solid and I think Season 2 Asuka is the best version of Asuka that we've ever seen. So uh, if you are an Asuka player then uh, good for you, congratulations because she's in an extremely good spot right now. Anything else I need to talk uh, about up here? Well, I put Armor King up here, which, you know, uh, I think an argument could be made for putting Armor King lower. I think he's definitely a worse character than regular King, even though I think he's still really good. Uh, but I think his toolkit is just extremely solid overall. I tend to think a lot about online when I make these lists, and that is a different environment uh, from you know, an online competitive uh, environment. Uh, and in online, I think Armor King is particularly strong because you tend to get away with reactable moves a little bit more. So stuff like Giant Swing and stuff like his down back three, which is his counter hit low, you tend to get away with that a lot more. And when you're getting away with that, you're extremely powerful in, in online, but that risk becomes a little bit too... Uh, big uh, in the case of the low uh, that you're gonna you know throw it out a lot when you're playing offline against somebody with really, really good reaction speed so you know depending on the environment I think armor King can get a lot better and a lot weaker but um, I think uh, if he's like on the line between two and three I decided to, to put him up here but it's uh, something that I was thinking about a lot you know but the dark up are really good for uh, with punishment, extremely solid, good combos with carry, high damage, uh, great mids, some very decent counter hit tools. He can stall uh, effectively at the end, end of the round if he wants to run out the clock. Grappling game is of course above average, so I think uh, I think I would put him in two, but he he might be three. Uh, anything else? I don't think so. So I'm gonna uh, move on to to three. I'm just gonna have one more look at it. Yeah, no, it looks about right to me. And then three, you can see that Miguel is up here. I think he's honestly still one of the weaker characters in this sort of three tier, but the season two changes to it made him slightly better and, and, and better uh, to an extent where he's not considered bottom tier anymore. And that's true for Lee as well. And I'm very happy for those two characters because I like both of them. Excuse me, and I would like them to be good. Chloe is another character. I don't think necessarily in the case of Chloe and the Bears that they are, uh, you know, characters that were uh, gradually buffed and became, you know, lower mid-tier characters after being low tier. I think they were actually just kind of solid uh, all along and it just took us a while to wake up to that fact. Uh, that's at least the way I feel about them. So uh, I think both Chloe and Bears are, are honestly pretty solid, like uh, mid-lower mid-tier characters in this game right now and I would not place them in the bottom tier. Uh, Noctis is here, he's another character who I think really works well in an online environment and not necessarily as well in an offline environment. Uh, but there are enough uh, solid things about him that I think he should be considered a pretty solid character. And if you just want to play a very defensive uh, sort of with punishing game with him, the down 4-2 is just such an insanely powerful launcher with the range that it has. Um, I mean, one of the longest range, really, really fast, you know, mid mid launchers in the game. So, uh, yeah, if you're just going to do down back two and you're just going to do down back one plus two, then you can really uh, hurt and mess people up. But if you're playing at a level where people really start, you know, dealing with that in an effective way, I still think you have decent enough, a decent enough toolkit that you should be considered at least mid tier. Uh, Katarina is here. I'm just going to mention her because she's another character that I play. I think she's at the upper end of the of the three tier. She's actually pretty solid, really good, you know, generic stuff. Very good down forward one. Very good uh, uh, jab string. Solid mix ups. Uh, extremely good whiff punishment. Her hop kick is one of the best in the game. Her combo damage is insane. Uh, she can get the stomp into uh, up back four at the wall really easily in the season, which means that it's something that Namco actually intend for you to do with her. Um, and what that means is that uh, Katarina is just completely a character that specializes in wall combo damage, which is kind of weird. Just so many good options for doing that. And if you get the rage drive, it's like, I don't know how much damage. I mean, you get 120 like easily when you're using that. So um, I think she's uh, solid and good. I think the, she's hurt a little bit by the fact that um, uh, she doesn't really have good 
uh, tracking a lot of the time and she's quite linear. Uh, but apart from that, I think she's solid. And Elise is here as well. They buffed her, they've changed her a couple of times, but they never really go into like the points where she really needs help. They usually do some pretty sort of superficial uh, changes to her that don't end up being all that effective for her, in my opinion. Like she didn't need a new wall bounce. Well, she kind of did, but then again, you know, wall bounce isn't going to make you a better character because it's such a specific tool. Uh, next, we have uh, Cosme in this tier, and, and I uh, I think a lot of people will be like, well, if Cosme is, is this low in the list, then what about Arslan, and why can he beat, you know, really good players in, in, in high-level tournaments? Uh, but, you know, you, you can't really have your cake and eat it too when you're talking about this. You can say, well, Tekken is a game that is very balanced, that any character can win, and then be surprised when a slightly lower uh, tier character wins. I mean, it, it makes sense. Uh, he's an extremely good player. I met him, by the way, and he's an extremely cool guy. Just uh, really, really nice. So, uh, I mean, big props to him for, in my opinion, beating really strong characters and some of the best players in the world with a character who's not necessarily as powerful. Uh, she's very fundamentally or fundamentals based you know jabs movement uh counter hit four down four one low pokes kind of character gets really low combo damage so she can you know just go for crazy stuff and try to capitalize on on uh launching the opponent over and over so i think if you do really well with kazumi especially now that she in my opinion has been nerfed uh it's usually because i think you're uh, just a very solid player so uh, if you love sort of the fundamentals of Tekken and, and just a downscale kind of basic movement heavy poke heavy playstyle, then uh, she's still very cool and there's a lot to love about this character. Um, she's probably one of the characters that I would like to see carried forward the most into newer versions of the game because I'm excited to see what they do with her. I like playing her myself, I have played her quite a bit, but you know she's a boss character and this might be her first and last game, we're just gonna have to wait and see. And then we got Marduk and Huarong, who I think you can make uh, arguments for placing uh, higher, but I decided to put them here. Huarong has been getting, I think, progressively weaker just because uh, he, he's such a barrage of attacks and confusion when you're just eating it. But now that the game has been out for quite a while, so many people have had so much experience finding those little uh, escape routes out of his offense. Um, and... Uh, he actually is quite linear, especially on the approach as well, and so if you have a little bit of reaction time and a little bit of foresight, it, it, he's actually quite easy to sidestep, in my opinion, a lot of the time. So I'm going to put him here, but Marduk and Horong, if you want to make an argument for promoting them to the two tier, I could see I could see that. That, that would make sense to me. Uh, and then we get to the bottom tier, and we've had some changes here as well. Lars, uh, Elisa, and Yoshimitsu have been uh, weak uh, for a while, in my opinion. Elisa is very sad. I don't know why they gave her like similar toolkit to the other like meter fireball characters, but then just made everything worse, everything more risky. Uh, everything is uh, more difficult to stick, has worse range. Uh, she needs to get a clean hit down three into DP2 to be very, very dangerous for her lows. Uh, and then that is so difficult to stick, especially on an opponent, opponent who's moving, who's backdashing, that what you end up doing half the time is just getting your DP2 blocked and then you're going to get launched every time. And then I also think she's, uh, in my opinion, humble opinion, the most execution heavy and difficult character to play just pure execution with your hands if you're going to play like uh, cookie cutter, uh, you know, optimal combos and stuff. So you have to make such an investment as a player to get really good with her and then you're not really getting a lot of rewards because I don't think the design overall has worked out for her. And it's so sad because she's one of my favorites. Yoshimitsu is just doesn't have any solidity anywhere uh, in, in the design, in my opinion. I think his, his combos are crap. And he's, um, yeah, he just doesn't have anything that sticks out as strong to me. And I think he's he's just weak in this game. Uh, Negan is a new addition, of course. And uh, a lot of people are talking about him being like super strong when he came out. It was pretty obvious to me within like an hour of playing him that that wasn't going to be the case. Um, he's very punishable. And you can just punish him, uh, block and punish quite easily if you know when and where to do it. Um, and then he's duckable in a lot of his standard offense, so he has to take risks. He's kind of similar to Miguel. That way you can't just put on pressure with Negan without exposing yourself to risks. And then the big thing is, of course, his stance, Intimidation. They made the stance so that you uh, don't have any lows to mix. You have an unblockable throw instead, but then the throw is reactable. 
which means that the mix of sounds just doesn't work. And I made a video a while ago where I talked about here's how you can practice how to deal with that stance effectively every time. And then I uh, started applying that myself online. And I don't think I've eaten that throw from Negan a single time since then. Like I duck it almost 100%. And I don't have great reaction time as a player, which means that if I can do it, then everybody else can. And the stance doesn't work. So there you go. However, I will say that it is one of the best and coolest character designs that we've ever had in terms of like just the, the overall design. If you tweak him to make him better, it's just the coolest thing ever. The sound effects, the personality, the fun factor, and everything else is just great with this character. He's by far my favorite guest character. Uh, they did an amazing job in implementing, you know, the bat for a Tekken character. He honestly, surprisingly, doesn't have that much range, even though he has a weapon. Uh, but how do you make like a bat really fun, really visceral, and, and a cool part of a Tekken character? And they just did that perfectly. I love the counter hits. I love the personality. I love the like everything, just the way he looks and feels and sounds. So an amazing job in terms of the character design. He's just not very good. And then I've demoted Raven, and Raven is a character that's really made a journey for me because I placed her like in really high tiers when I made my very early list for this game because I felt like she was a character that had a lot of untapped potential that people weren't exploring. But I feel like at this point, if she really did have all that potential, then somebody would have really explored it and you would be seeing at least a couple of really, really powerful Raven players uh, kicking around. And you really don't, at least not in my experience. And I've been thinking a lot more about it and I'm like, yeah, she's really cool. Like one of my favorites, again, I, I get, I'm like a low tier lizard. I just love all of these like low tier characters because I'm, I'm i'm like a chronic hipster i guess but she's uh, amazing like in every way except for the fact that i just don't think she's very good and the way to make her better sadly is to maybe dial back a little bit of all the crazy stuff that she does and just give her more generic solid you know typical tekken stuff um I mean, she, she would really benefit from just a normal, fast, standard 15 frame launcher, like a hop kick. She would love that. It would mean a lot to her. Um, and then the fact that you have to implement back turn and expose yourself to constant risks. I think Eris uh, said it and I, I, it made a lot of sense to me. She's a character who has to mix up herself when she wants to mix up the opponent. So something to that effect, I'm paraphrasing, but it's a pretty good way to put it. And then... Um, down on the side here we have Gigas, who I think should still be considered just the worst character in the game. He had some buffs very recently that I haven't explored. I haven't had the chance to play with his new Goliath stuff yet. I don't. I think it's going to be uh, an improvement for him, but I don't think it's going to be the thing that's going to save him, uh, because you need to, to make pretty fundamental changes to, to the character to to make him uh, viable. And he's the only character right now where I would go, yeah, he's like seriously bad. I don't know why they made his 1-2, which is such like an iconic great move for him. It's like the one of the main draws of the character. Your 10 frame block puncher is this giant, you know, 30 plus damage thing that wall splats. And they made it launch punishable, so now it's only use, useful for punishment. You can use it to get the opponent off you or anything like that, because I think it's, what, what is it? It's launch punishable, I know that, but I think it's actually minus 15, 16. I mean, it might even be 17. Ah, I should have looked that up, but there you go. So... That's my list, and I'm sure you all have a lot of opinions. Just let me uh, reiterate that. I take it with a grain of salt. I'm just, uh, I just really like having these discussions with you guys, and uh, and talking about it in the comments, which is why I make these. So, uh, if you do disagree, let me know. If you do agree, then obviously let me know as well. Um, and just any uh, thing that you would like to add. I mean, we have specialists for pretty much every character somewhere in my viewer community, so you could uh, share your insights uh, with the rest of us. Uh, but for now, it's great to be back. Uh, a lot of videos coming in the future. Uh, it's just great to talk to you guys again. I've missed you. Uh, and I'll see you guys again uh, very soon. Uh, bye bye for now.